Chemical contaminants. There are three different types of contaminants that you can have when it involves food. Uh, one of them is biological, one of them is physical, and one of them is chemical. Today we're going to talk about chemical contaminations. All right. Um, the following um, are, are the steps we need to do to prevent uh, uh, contamination of chemicals. Um, and the chemicals include cleaners, sanitizers, polishes, machine lubricants, um, and they all pose a risk to food. All right. Uh, first and foremost, you need to purchase from an approved vendor and supplier. That seems to be a recurring uh, thing with ServeSafe, and it totally makes sense. You want to make sure that you're buying from someone who's giving you quality stuff, who's not going to give you things that are not going to, or they're not prepared or made for the food service area. All right. Uh, store chemicals away from food prep areas. Okay. Very, very important that you do not put your um, your your chemicals, uh, store them inside of where you're doing your food. Only have your chemicals out that you actually possibly have to use. And then when you do have those out, you want to make sure that um, they are in an area that is separated from the food, usually a designated area below a sink. Um, if, there's plum if there's plumbing under a sink, you cannot put any food there. So it's a perfect place to put um, to put chemicals. All right. Um, now you just got through saying that. Under the sink is a great place to go. Um, in the commercial kitchen, there should be no food uh, or food products underneath a sink where there is plumbing. So it's a perfect spot for you to uh, designate for chemicals only. And um, if you walk through your kitchen and you see a chemical bottle sitting on a table or sitting where it's not supposed to be, everybody should know where that, that the area is in the kitchen where they're acceptable to be, and they should relocate it immediately. Um, one of my big pet peeves is, you know, I'll leave something in the kitchen purposely just to see how many people will walk by it and not touch it, knowing full well that they should move it, but they don't do a thing to change it, which is a problem. All right. Um, you should store your chemicals in a separate locker or cabinet um, if, if you're going to be in the same room as the food. So, uh, you know, in our storeroom, we have or in, in the, the a la carte side storeroom, there is a separate cabinet. The food's on one shelf. The cabinet's way over on the other side, and it is uh, has doors on it. And all the chemicals are in there, and all the food is separated by at least uh, eight feet. And it's totally it's totally a, a different area. Um, and that's by design. You want to make sure that you don't store your chemicals uh, with your food. If in the event that a chemical container breaks and drips into the food, that could cause contaminants easily. Uh, whenever possible, separate the storeroom, have the chemicals have their own special storeroom. It's so much easier to, uh, to keep things separate if you have the chemicals in a separate room. All right. Um, do not mix chemicals. Never, ever, ever mix chemicals. Um, only mix things that, that um, it's written on the side of the box or on, on the label of the container itself. A lot of degreasers will come and they're power packed and they'll say right on there, dilute by three times with water. So that means if you're going to put one quart of degreaser into, um, into a, 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 a container and you're going to dilute by three times, you're going to add three quarts of water. Uh, do not fall under the, well, if I'm supposed to dilute it by three times, if I don't dilute it at all, it's going to be that much stronger. No, because now it could be potentially hazardous to you as the person who's using it. It can burn your hands, and it can also uh, leave, leave a residue on the um, on the equipment that could be toxic. So you want to follow the manufacturer's instructions to the letter. Do not deviate from it. All right. Make sure you use only food grade lubricants for your equipment, knife uh, sharpening stones. Um, please don't bring in WD-40, the motor, motor oil for your car, and don't bring in, um, uh, oh, I said that wrong, motor oil from your car or WD-40, which is the, the spray on stuff. Um, there are lubricants that are made specifically uh, for food service operations. So when you use them on your mixers, on your slide, a lot of times the, the slicer will get, all, will get all tough and you won't be able to slide on the rocker arm where the, the food sits into the, into the cradle. <coughs> if you uh, bring in WD-40 and you put it on there, it's going to go a lot quicker, a lot easier, but we run the risk 
of getting that grease or that oil on your food and contaminating your food. You can't do that. You have to use a food grade oil. Therefore, if any of it does get on the food, it's not going to be potentially hazardous to anybody. It's not going to contaminate anything. All right. Uh, read the label. See what the label says. What do you read it again? Um, always store chemicals in the container they came in and read the labels before using them. All right. Best case scenario, uh, it comes in, you're able to use it straight out of the bottle and you do not have to worry about uh, adding chemicals or adding water or anything like that. You just right, use it straight away. Um, that's awesome that you don't have to worry about uh, labeling it or dating it or any of that kind of stuff. It comes in, stays in the, in the bottle it came in and has a label on it. Best case scenario. Now, there are some things that you're going to have to move, change, all right? And you're going to need to put them into a spray bottle or some kind of different bottle, okay? You must label that bottle clearly. It's got to be labeled somewhere on the bottle what it is, where it came from, uh, so everybody knows in the entire kitchen what 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 um, what's in it so there's no mishaps. Uh, and I'll give you a little fun story. A lot of times, us chef-type people – Love to use squirt bottles when we're plating our food. Uh, it, it, it makes it go quicker. You can do uh, pretty plate designs, and that's awesome. Okay, so here's the uh, funny story or the fun story. Eh, not so fun story. Um, this is a picture of a dishwasher area. See where the, where, the, where the racks are up here? One of my employees decided it'd be really a good idea because we have this big red here. This big red cleaner is a fabulous cleaner. If you ever get a chance to use it, by all means, do so. Follow the instructions and do what it says. What happens is if you spray this big this big red on any, any kind of container or any kind of thing that's greasy, it cuts through that grease instantaneously. So my guys at the dishwasher, they thought to themselves, well, you know, if this stuff is good, it's great. And so they thought, well, the, the gallon sitting up here on the shelf really doesn't. It's in the way. It's a problem. So what they did was they went and they grabbed one of the squeeze bottles that we use on the line uh, to plate stuff up, to put olive oil in, all kinds of things we put in it on the chef's line. They put the big red inside of the squeeze bottle. And then I came along one day and saw the squeeze bottle sitting on the shelf up here. And I thought to myself, well, why did somebody put red wine vinegar sitting over here by, in, in the dish room area? It shouldn't be over here. I grabbed the bottle and I started walking to the chef's line. And on the way, I smelled the chemical coming out of the nozzle from the spray bottle that wasn't labeled. I had no idea what was in there. And thank goodness I smelt it because if I didn't, I would have taken that. I would have put it on the hotline and I guarantee you one of my chefs or one of my line cooks would have thought it was red wine vinegar just like I did. And they would have put it inside a salad or they would have put it on something and somebody would have gotten very, very sick. So make sure if you do take a chemical out of a container and you put it into another container that you always label it so it's clear in big, huge letters so everybody knows it is degreaser. Um, and try not to use a piece of equipment that would that it could be versatile uh, that the chef could use on the line. If you're going to do that, make sure it's a spray bottle or something that that is something that we wouldn't commonly use on the line so that kind of mistake doesn't happen. Uh, MSDS sheets or SDS sheets. Um, they have they have recently changed them. I shouldn't say recently, a couple of years ago, changed them. So in the past, you would see these yellow books and you still might see them in your kitchens now. Um, and the M MSDS or SDS sheets go inside of there. The purpose of those sheets is it talks about the chemical, talks about what's in it. It talks about what happens if somebody was to, to ingest it by swallowing it or um, you know, somehow, somehow swallowing it or getting it in their mouth, or if they got it in their eyes. Um, and what can happen is if somebody uh, uh, by mistake drinks it, so let's say you have the big red and somebody foolishly um, uh, sprayed it on a salad and somebody ate it, we would then be able to take the sheet out of the MSDS or the SDS book and give it to the paramedics or, you know, send it to that person send it with that person to uh, um, to the hospital to make sure that they know exactly what's in it. They always has the name and the number of the company who makes it, the telephone number on there, and all the information that the hospital would need. That's important for every chemical that's in your facility that you have the sheet. And uh, from personal experience, because I had somebody by mistake get some in their eyes, um, we went to the MSDS book and we grabbed out the sheet and we sent it with them. And then after they were gone, we realized, but we don't have another sheet. 
Uh, so when those sheets come in, they always come in with the, the, the chemical itself. Um, you make sure you make a copy. And so inside of your book, you have the chemical. And then, and usually what, I, what I've done now is I have a big page that has the, the name and a picture of the bottle on it. So if you have someone who doesn't speak English really that well, they can find it and see what it looks like and get the right one. Um, and then I have more than one copy just in the outside. You know, so when that, that copy goes with the person to the hospital, you always have a backup. Um, and usually I have at least five copies of each. And then when something like that happens, you make another copy and put it back in. Hopefully, cross your fingers, it never happens to you. Um, do your best to clean before and after. Now, of course, we all know that we have um, uh, the green buckets are for clean, the red buckets are for sanitizing, uh, green is clean, red is dead. And in between uh, projects on the table, you're going to want to take the green bucket out, wash, and then you're going to want to rinse, and then you're going to want to take the sanitizing bucket, and you're going to want to wipe it all down. The sanitizer in that red bucket, you should be checking um, to make sure that the concentration is correct and that you're not going to make anybody sick. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to pull out, this is glass cleaner, and this is a comet, and you have food exposed. You don't want to pull that out during production because it's very simple and very easy for you to um, – to get some of that, some of that cleaner on your food, and no matter no matter how much you cook it, it's not going to go away, and you could get somebody sick. All right, and I believe that is the end of uh, chemical con contamination. The high points are clean and sanitize um, as you go, but make sure that the the heavy duty cleaners, the greasers, and the comets don't come out until after everything has been prepped, cooked, put away, um, and then you bring that stuff out and you clean. Um, make sure that you label containers if you have to take it out. Never, ever uh, mix uh, chemicals together that you don't have to mix together. Um, store them separately in the storeroom or whatever possible. Store them in a whole separate room. If not, on a separate shelf with doors on it. And make sure that, um, that you uh, are really conscious of where they, where they are in the kitchen. Do not let them sit on the counters uh, look for an area where there's plumbing and, and put it on, on the ground uh, underneath the plumbing. Matter of fact, as I was looking at this, I didn't even see it until, until I was talking. Right here is the chemical that's for the dish machine. It's on the ground underneath, not exposed to any, any food at all. That's the idea situation. Um, and it, a great thing to do is, is also label those areas so everybody in the kitchen knows where the chemicals should be. And if somebody should happen to see a chemical jar sitting in the wrong spot, they can simply grab it and put it where it's supposed to be. Um, food safety is everybody's responsibility from the executive chef all the way down to the last dishwasher who just got hired. It, the wait staff, everybody's responsibility for, uh, for food safety when it comes to chemical, physical, or biological contamination. Okay, thank you very much.